All right, my good friends, this is Mr. Davis um, getting ready. This is um, Wednesday's class content. Uh, so I'll go over the instructions and uh, tell us uh, what we got going, what we got coming up here. So um, good thing is basically you just have to watch this lecture on Edpuzzle and answer um, a few of the questions. You don't have to type anything out tonight or uh, turn anything back in, just have to finish this lecture, which is a nice little break after um, Monday and Tuesday's homework where you did have to do some reading. So um, this lecture will then be due, I guess, on Thursday at 9 o'clock. Okay, so the class content. Um, so today, if this was a class uh, at Brossert, we would spend about 10 minutes reading um, our textbooks from... 844 to 859. We're going to have a quiz on that on Friday. It's going to be a Google form quiz. So we spent 10 minutes on that. And then uh, um, this lecture should last you uh, reading, doing questions, should take you about um, 20 minutes or so. Um, and then after we would have done that, we would, we would have played a Quizlet. So I attached the Quizlet for you. We spent about 10 minutes on that. Uh, so this would get us close to 40 minutes, um, and then we'd be talking about the tests that we have coming up. So, uh, And I'll, I'll talk about that. But we are going to have a test because we're ending Unit 6. So we are going to have a, a test in here. Uh, I don't, you may not be having them in other classes. I know I've given a vocab quiz, but we're going to have a test just because we, we've got to kind of keep plugging along. Uh, it'll be um, on uh, Google forms google quizzes i'll post it on tuesday and so you'll have tuesday to take it um so it's going to be 20 question multiple choices and we will have some like two short answer questions on there um like i said it'll be done on a google form so we'll do just like we would normally i'm going to give you a unit um six kind of review packet um that i think will be helpful and we'll talk about the quiz if you have questions about or the test you have questions about just let me know but tonight like i said there's nothing really to turn in you just have to go through this lecture and answer some questions um that you see so um and then what i also did here which i won't go over right now but i put uh some tips about short answer questions and how to answer short answer questions because I've been trying to do some reading and research and see what other teachers are thinking. And uh, it's hard to exactly say positively what the test is going to look like, but some people are theorizing it's going to be like three short answer questions um, because they're giving us 45 minutes to take the test. And now I'm talking about the AP test at the end of the year that you would take for college credit. So um, some people are, predicting it's going to be some version of short answer questions. So here's an, just a refresher on short answer questions, the ACE method. This is a big thing right here you want to do is bring in outside evidence to explain why you answered a question in a certain way. Um, and then I also put down here some words that they like to use on short answer questions. Like they're going to ask you to, to explain how to compare or contrast. It really, I would be shocked if there's short answer questions on the test that they don't ask you to compare this civilization to another civilization or this era to another era or this this part of the world to another part of the world. So compare and contrasting are going to be a big. So like oftentimes in one short answer question, they might say compare colonialism in Africa to uh, the age of imperialism in China. Uh, part B might ask you contrast what is going on in China with how China westernized compared to how Japan westernized. So you definitely want to be getting used to how to compare and contrast things. Um, they also like to ask causation. How did A cause B, for example, like explain how the scientific revolution um, led to the industrial revolution. You know, how would you explain that? And within these things, you want to be able to put in specific facts that you that you've learned throughout the course. Um, continuity, the continuity is a, a, um, just a fancier term for staying the same. 
how do things remain the same over time? Um, like how does China remain an empire or dynasty for hundreds of years? They also, uh, against that grain would be change over time. They like to ask questions about how did certain places or civilizations or religions, how did they change over time? How do they start from one spot and end in a totally different spot? And the example I use here, how did maybe you get a question about the scramble from Africa. How did Africa go from a continent where people govern themselves independently to a continent that was nearly entirely controlled by the Europeans uh, in the early nine, 1900s? Uh, and again, you're going to see the spice terms pop up a lot on short answer questions. So we will try to do a few more short answer questions, do some short answer practice. I just wanted to add this in here. This isn't anything that you need to turn in or answer questions are. They're just, just reminders. We've been talking about this all year, but um, we don't find out for another um, 10 days or so uh, what the test exactly is going to be set up. So a lot of people are theorizing it's going to be some version of short answer questions. All right, so let's get into the main uh, discussion of today's lecture, which is going over last night's reading and looking at the reading. So again, I share this. This is not from your textbook. It's a link that I shared with you. We did, we've done this a couple of times where we've looked at um, like the regular World Civ book to maybe make things go a little bit quicker. And just what's nice about regular World Civ books is they have highlighted terms and they put a lot of facts and it's just a quicker read. But so last night um, you read about um, how Britain um, and the other countries took over Africa, the scramble for Africa. Um, I put a map on there um, at the end of last night's um, handout. Just what was really crazy is it showed you when they got their independence. When did all these nations finally free themselves from European rule? Um, this is a great fact up here to remember that Ethiopia was the country down here. This was the independent state. The Italians came down from here. They wanted to get into in on this action. They thought they were kind of pumping their chest out as Europeans, quote unquote, industrialized Europeans. And the Ethiopians, they dropped the hammer on the Italians. So they remain an independent state. So that, if you got an um, SAQ about, um, colonialism in Africa, one thing that like is different than every everywhere else basically in Africa is how the Ethiopians resisted the powerful Europeans. So that was a good part of the reading. Also, uh, Muhammad Ali and the um, Egyptian cotton industry and how um, Egypt was part of the failing Ottoman Empire and it talks about their cotton industry last night. Suez Canal is huge in this reading. It's a huge, you say, I say this all the time, a huge quote unquote takeaway. All right, so the Suez Canal, it allowed the Europeans, because now they're getting over into Asia, it allows the Europeans to go from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea, basically getting them into the Indian Ocean. So no longer do they have to go all the way down the whole entire gigantic continent of Africa, they can go straight through here. What is interesting, though, is that they're going through uh, a lot of Muslim territory right here. Um, and the British had, quote unquote, um, called Egypt a protectorate, protect, uh, meaning they protected Egypt. Quite, say they protected it, and I'm using my air quotes here. It's kind of humorous air quotes as they quote unquote, protected them. Really, they just wanted to exploit the resources. Um, this is a picture, like if this is a normal AP test, um, definitely could see multiple choice questions with this picture. What the heck's going on here is uh, people are coming out and uh, watching this uh, canal being opened up. You see the big ships, but you also see sail ships back there. Um, and the French actually try to get it started they can finish it the british take it over and the british end up they just say you know what we're just gonna buy this from you egypt and i'm sure they pay them handsomely 
Probably not. Um, and then this was pretty interesting, I thought. Um, this was a cool story about David Livingston being an explorer that went down into Africa in the in the mid nineteenth century. In eighteen forty one he goes down there to these uncharted uh territories. He's exploring this. They actually say that uh he hated it. Uh I think it goes on to say like uh uh it was uh let me just pause it for one second. All right, we're gonna pick back up and I uh mistakenly said that David Livingston was the one that hated Africa, but it was actually Henry Stanley. So David Livingston goes down there, um, checks it out, does some exploring, and then just vanishes. So um, he disappears, and the New York Herald sends Henry Stanley to find the explorer. And one of the famous historical quotes of all time, he actually does find him. He kind of finds a needle in the haystack. This famous quote says, Overwhelmed by finding Livingstone alive, if not well, Stan Stanley famously greeted the explorer, Dr. Livingston, I presume. After, after Livingston's death in 1873, Stanley remained in Africa to carry out the great explorer's work. He is the one that hated it. He said, I detest the land heartily. But what he does is he you connect the dots to another famous guy that we talked about before we left for our crazy uh, sickness uh, vacation. Probably not the best word to say, but sickness uh quarantine uh, he calls up king leopold uh, of belgium and tells him basically to come down here because you can definitely profit in this place for sure and that is what leopold does uh, unfortunately to africa um there was a so this is a really interesting story about the the boyers who the boyers were uh it, it might take you a second to realize this so the boyers were Afrikaners. Uh, they were the descendants of original Dutch settlers. So basically what they were, were in Latin America, we would call them Creoles, meaning they weren't born in Africa, but they were, you know, direct 100% bloodline, bloodlines back to Europe, I should say. So let me just repeat that. They weren't born in Europe, but they had 100% European bloodlines for the Boyers. Uh, and they um got into a fight with the uh the british down here and they go into wars it was called the the boyer wars uh the people living down here at this time period this indigenous group of people were called the zulu okay so uh here is shaka zulu here is his uh his biography so there's there's a lot of different um, indigenous groups that Unit 6 talks about in different parts of the world. In Australia, the British penal colony, uh, their indigenous population were called the Aborigines. In America, it talks about the Cherokee Indians in the eastern part of the country. Down here in South Africa, we have a group called the Zulu, and they were led by Shaka Zulu. Uh, it'd be a good person to know that like he was a guy that put up resistance. We've seen this guy a time or two, Cecil Rhodes, country of Rhodesia was named after him. Um, and it later is no longer Rhodesia. I believe it's Zimbabwe now. And uh, he was uh, in the cartoon with his foot on one, uh, in one part of Africa and his other foot on entirely other end of Africa. She, showing British dominance um, goes again against Cecil Rhodes and the diamond to beer industries. Um, this was uh, just a couple paragraph thing about the Boyer Wars. So in 1910, the British created an independent union of South Africa, which combined the Cape Colony and the Boyer Republics. The new state would be a self-governing nation within the British Empire. To appease the Boyers, the British agreed that only whites and a few proprietary Africans would vote. Okay, and so that's the Boyer Wars. Um, we talked a lot. This is kind of how we ended last night's homework. Um, this was one guy who argues for the white man's burden. And this guy, uh, Edward Morrill, who is a British journalist in 1903, 
who who has successfully had his eye opened to what actually the hellish things that were going on in Africa. He he comes up with the phrase, and if, if you were ever given the opportunity to uh, answer a question about um, colonialism and in Africa, if you could use the black man's burden by Edward Morrill, like that would be like that, like an instant point if you could use it correctly. Because we hear so much about the white man's burden, but the exact opposite is this black man's burden right here. And it's, it's pretty much beast mode if you can use that in uh, answering some of your questions. All right, so that was an interesting read. So tonight, so I'm not going to have you um, do all of this here where um, where I'm giving you a guided reading you fill out. I'm not doing that because you've done that enough this week. So what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to um, have some questions and you just you just a click of a button you you get you answer them. You you have the you have this text you have this link. Uh, with you from uh, Tuesday night's homework so you can use it to answer the questions. So basically you're just going to go through the lecture and answer the questions. So what I'd like for you to do, and you might be saying, Mr. Davis, we're hammering the same thing over and over. And you're right. We are hammering this like imperialism over and over right now, because this is it. Um, unit six is done. And when we're done with unit six, uh, we review and we'll talk a little bit about World War One and World War Two before the test, and, and then we will after the test. We'll do some fun things with it. But Unit Six is it with the content. So my my uh, theory of how I want to do this is just um, I just want to hammer Unit Six home these next couple of days, and then I I want to review. So that's why we're spending some extra double backing. Um, over unit six because i really want you to remember it and if it stops at unit six i bet unit six on whatever type of test they're going to give us is going to be uh there's going to play a big part in the test is unit six so what i want you to do now is to um, take some time and read 702 to uh 703 so take about two minutes to read that and then you can answer the questions that come from this reading, which I will put in the lecture. Okay, let's pick it back up here. So one thing I want to show you is this is a cartoon. Cartoons are all all, all over the AP test. Um, and this one, we talked to in the beginning of this lesson, like uh, compare societies, like compare uh, India to Africa. Well, you could use one way I could remember this. This is a sepoy. And one of the derogatory terms we found out last night that they used in Africa, that the Europeans used against the Africans, was the word boy. They would call uh, a black man a boy. And that was, you can imagine how infuriating that would be. So here's a sepoy, rhymes with boy. And here you see the British official, the governor here, just sitting here. The sepoy is, you know, like, you know, two feet tall. And, and that shows you what the British think about the Indians. Like they are inferior people. But, and you can see also like he's looking down on them. He's kind of got a smirk on his face. He's patting him on the head. Um, and it says, you know, that this this man has to promise to be a good little sepoy. Um, also, and you can see that this sepoy is dressed up in British military, uh, for, you know, uniform and probably maybe trying to impress this governor here. And, and that's another way to like, uh, to be like, to have somebody underneath your thumb is having them to try to emulate you. And uh, so you see the, the racism here in this, this picture. And you can compare that to what's going on in Africa just with how they refer to the blacks as boys in Africa. Okay, so now the next set of questions from 704 down to um, basically 707. Take like three minutes and read those pages, and then we'll give you some questions from that one. 
Okay, make sure you read this here about Mohandas Mahatma Gandhi here from 1869 to 1948. He was the Indian independence leader. You've probably seen his picture before. You've, um, you've heard his name for sure. So this is a great uh, little read here. This shows you kind of like the, the positive and negative effects of colonialism because if I ask you what was his profession, he was a lawyer. So he was educated. He was Indian. He wasn't born in, in Britain or anything like that. He was Indian, but he was well educated enough to be a lawyer. Also, it shows you kind of the the scope of the British Empire. Where was he practicing? He was practicing law in South Africa. So India was controlled by the British almost entirely. South Africa was controlled by the British. So he was working inside the um, the British Empire. Um, and it says he organized protests against racism and unjust laws in South Africa. Upon returning to India in 1914, he organized civil disobedience against British rule. After his arrest in 1922, he defended his beliefs at trial. Nonviolence is the first article of my faith. It is also the last article of my creed. Gandhi's methods eventually paid off. Britain agreed to India's independence in 1947. Um, and he passed away in 1948. So kind of spent like basically his whole adult life uh, helping India get their independence. Okay, uh, and my computer's gonna be running out here. So I am going to just really quick here um, to show you the Quizlet that I made for you. Uh, I'll be putting that in there uh, if that pops up. But one of the things I like to do with these Quizlets is I uh, put a bunch of uh, pictures like this picture here of the Congolese picture shows you the brutality of these boys have, and their arms cut off. This is also from our book. Just to get you, uh, if you ever see pictures that you know, wow, I know exactly what's going on here in this uh, chopping up of China and the sphere of influence. Okay, so thanks for working hard. I'm going to end this and put some questions in here and get it uploaded for you. If you have any questions, please Please uh, let me know.